I got too many. Hi, I'm PH, and welcome to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge with PhD. In this set of videos, I want to provide an enjoyable and helpful way to understand common questions about the Bible. I hope you'll find these videos helpful for your own spiritual journey in Jesus. So, let's get started. What is the significance of the ten plagues in the story of Exodus? Couldn't God have done it with just one? Couldn't God have delivered his people with his great power just immediately? When Moses returned to Egypt, he gathered the people and told them of God's plan to free them from slavery. And the people believed Moses and they praised God Yay! for his merciful care. And girded with renewed confidence, Moses and his brother Aaron approached the Pharaoh and declared God's message. Pharaoh replied, Who is this God that I should obey him? I do not know this God of whom you speak. God was about to introduce himself not just to Pharaoh, but to the entire nation of Egypt. Pharaoh, in anger, increased the Israelites' workload, which increased the suffering of the people. When Moses was met by his people, they accused him of adding to their oppression. And Moses turned to the Lord in great sorrow and discouragement. God responded by revealing his sovereign plan. When Moses and Aaron approached the Pharaoh for a second time, the Pharaoh's magicians were able to duplicate one of God's miracles with their black arts, which only increased the stubborn pride of Pharaoh. And what would follow would be the greatest battle between the power of God and the power of Satan, the greatest display of the supremacy of God over all other gods. In a total, there would be ten plagues, each showing God's superiority over the Egyptians' false idols. And as each plague progressed, one can see two things happening. Little by little, the resistance of the Pharaoh's magicians begins to turn to fear and reverence. But in contrast, despite warning after warning, the Pharaoh continues to stand firm in his pride and rebellion. In the first three judgments, God turned the Nile River into blood. He beset Egypt with frogs and a plague of gnats. And the magicians warned Pharaoh that this was the finger of God in action, but Pharaoh refused to listen. The next three judgments involved a plague of flies, the death of all livestock, and a plague of painful boils upon the people of Egypt. At the end of this cycle, the magicians of Egypt could not even stand before Moses because of the painful boils, yet Pharaoh continued to stand against God. In the next three judgments, there were plagues of hail, locusts, and an utter darkness that covered the land. And still Pharaoh stood firm in his rebellion and pride. He then threatened Moses that if ever I see you again, you will die. However, it says that the people of Egypt held Moses in great favor and honor as they began to recognize the power of God. As Moses was leaving the Pharaoh's presence, God then spoke to Moses. One final plague will be brought upon Egypt for their pride and rebellion, and their sorrow will be so great that the Pharaoh will indeed let my people go. And when the people of Israel leave, they will not leave empty-handed. Instead, they will leave with the favor of the people of Egypt, who will shower upon them gifts of gold and silver, and thus the Israelites will plunder Egypt. So why ten plagues? Well, each plague illustrated a particular power of God over the idolatry of Egypt. In the ten plagues, we see that God's intent was not only to free his people from slavery, but more importantly, to show all the nations of the world that he is the only true God. In each of the plagues, Pharaoh was given an opportunity to humble himself and admit that God is the true God. But in every opportunity, Pharaoh instead chose to harden his heart in pride. The Bible says in the resurrection of Jesus that God gives the greatest demonstration of his power and mercy. And in this one miracle of the resurrection of Jesus, God makes it clear that he has power over death itself. And in his mercy, God is offering an opportunity for every person to humble themselves and accept Jesus as the Son of God, who died for sin and rose from the dead. And the Bible declares that anyone who would humbly accept Jesus as Savior will be set free from the slavery of sin. Thanks for listening to another episode of Good Bible Knowledge. We'll see you next time.